So I built this guy back in 2011 and it has seen better days. It has been being utilized in my home as a family computer in our common room. However, we have since replaced it with a smaller, sleeker unit. Between this channel, Redbeard Engineered, and my main channel, Redbeard Ops, I create a large amount of video content that has been filling up the drives on my home PC, and I would very much like to put all of that content in one space on a network-attached storage device. Now, you can buy these devices online as a one-stop shop, or you can build your own, and that is what we're going to be doing today with this old computer. So the main reason we replaced this 2011 custom-built PC in our home was because it died. The first thing I thought it could be was the power supply, so I jumped the green and black leads to see if I could get some of the fans to power on, which they did, thus indicating that the PSU is operational. Next up was the processor. It had an Intel i5-2500K quad-core in it, but I noticed that the fan on the cooler died, which likely caused it to burn up. I jumped on at Macari and found a second-hand Intel Xeon E3-1225 processor for $12. From what I could tell with a little online research, this processor was compatible with the i5's performance that I had in the machine. Considering this NAS is going to be used as an archival backup, I didn't feel the need to put high-end performance components into the system. This old Cooler Master case actually had some pretty nice drive mounting features, including this large cage and rail attachments for 3.5 inch drives. I'm going to throw this old 250GB SSD into the system to act as a cache drive, along with a 6TB Western Digital Blue drive from another PC, and a shucked 1TB drive from a 2009 external hard drive. The takeaway here is that Unraid is extremely flexible if you have a bunch of old hardware. Now, I'm about to show myself removing the GPU, however, I do go back later and reinstall it in order to attach a monitor during the initial startup phase of Unraid. Once this is complete though, I end up removing it again. To install Unraid, go to unraid.net backslash downloads and download the USB creator. I attempted to put this on a new 32 gigabyte USB, However, I found that some USBs are not supported by Unraid. I dug out an older Kingston drive that worked just fine. Note you'll probably want a smaller drive since this will be plugged into the NAS forever. Once the USB flash creator was finished, I plugged the USB into my tower, which is connected via Ethernet to my network. I then powered on the machine and waited for it to boot from the USB. After a minute or two, you'll see your Unraid server IP at the bottom of your screen. This is what you'll type into your web browser to connect to your NAS. The first time you do this, you'll be prompted with creating a password for the root user. You can then choose if you want to start a free trial or purchase a key. I ended up purchasing a key from Unraid for the basic system that has less than six drives. I did have some issues with my key that was solved by manually downloading the key file from the email sent after signup and then moving it to the USB via copy and paste. This will replace the key file that is already on the USB. While this got me running, I think I could have avoided it by setting the system time appropriately in Unraid settings, which I did end up doing later, and then inputting my product key within the Unraid UI. I'm not exactly sure what caused this issue, but you can see the signs of it here, with my uptime being 13 years and five months in the top right of the dashboard. Anyways, I was able to get it resolved and start building my array. I plan on replacing this parity drive at the end of the video, but I wanted to build an array and test things out with what I had in the NAS. I made the Western Digital 6TB Blue my parity and then a 1TB drive as disk 1 and then started building the parity. This took around 19 hours to complete. Once this was finished, I set up a network share by going to the shares option on the top selection bar and then clicking on add share. I left most of these settings alone, but made sure to set export to on, as well as setting it to private while giving the user I created off camera read write access. In Windows, I right clicked on this PC, selected map drive, and then typed in the name of my Unraid server, followed by the name of the share. At this point, you can use the shared folder on your Unraid NAS, like any other folder on your Windows machine. So now with everything working, I decided to swap out my parity drive with a larger, newer drive so that this system can grow more easily in the future. I found these used 8TB drives on Amazon that say they have a 5-year warranty. 
If you want to gamble on them like I did, I'll put a link to them in the description below. With the new drive installed, I reset the NAS, changed the parity drive from the 6TB blue to the new drive, and then rebuilt the parity. This took about another 19 hours to complete. Once this parity rebuild was done, I stopped the array, then added the 6TB blue as disk number 2, and an additional old 1TB drive as disk number 3. This rebuild took another 19 hours and left me with around 7TB of space. The nice thing is that with an 8TB parity drive and the basic Unraid license, I can build this NAS out to around 40TB without a cache drive. I physically moved this NAS into our master bathroom and used a Deco mesh node to connect it to my network. Right now it's acting as a local backup for the Synology NAS I ended up buying to act as my tier 1 storage, which I'll likely do a video on in the future. I barely touched the surface of what this Unraid server can do, but I just wanted to plant a seed of curiosity for those who have an old machine that they're looking to repurpose. This tower is going to be an integral component of my storage solution, and I'm happy that I was able to get it up and running for a very reasonable price. If y'all enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. This is Redbeard Engineered, signing off.